Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Vessalatu vesselam ala seyyidil mursalin. Seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem teslimen kathira. Esselamu alaikum ve rahmetullahi ve barakatuhu. Peace and greetings to all of our guests, whoever you may be, from ever from wheresoever you may hail, and whatever faith you may profess. May Allah Ta'ala, Almighty God, bless all of you and bless us during this time of anxiety, this time of, for some people, unfortunately, depression, this time of death, over one upwards to 160,000 of our fellow Americans having perished during this COVID-19 crisis. So many questions arrive in terms of uh, the faith perspective in terms of the decree of Almighty God, in terms of the uh, large number who have perished, is, is this a punishment? Is this uh, owing to our sins? Excuse me. As a Muslim, there are many ways we can look at this situation. Uh, first and foremost, as Muslims, we understand that our living in this world is a test. We're tried. Uh, we read in the Quran, blessed, uh, is the one who has the dominion over all things and he over all things has power. The one who has created death and then life in order to test you, which of you are best indeed. So we're, we're tested. Do you think you will enter paradise and there's not yet come to you the likes of that which uh, afflicted those who preceded them? We tested them with all sorts of difficulties and hardships until the messenger at that time and the believers with him cried out, when does the help of God come? Verily, the help of God is close by. So <clears throat> we could go on and on with the verses uh, that express the, the nature of this world, which is trial and tribulation. And then we move on to the next world. And if we have succeeded in being patient and entertaining a good opinion of our Lord during those trials and tribulations, then we enter paradise. And paradise is called Dar es Salaam, the abode of that's free from the imperfections, the uh, defects that exist in the world. Disease is one of those defects. D disease renders our body defective. And in paradise, there are no diseases. There is no death. There, is no, there are no conflicts. So these are all from this world, from the nature of the world. If we go back to one of the... Uh, Verses or a one, I didn't mention the verse actually, or reference it, but there's a verse in the Quran, do they think they are safe from the decree of Almighty God? No one feels they are safe from the decree of God except a people who are at a loss. And so uh, we we live in this world and we think that things that might be unpleasant could never be decreed by God. And inevitably, we find and we confront unpleasant things, unpleasant realities, and some people blame God for that. But as Muslims, we're told, don't think you're going to be safe from the unpleasant aspects of what our Lord has decreed. If, if everything were peaches and cream, hunky-dory, sailing down the river of serendipitous bliss on the good ship lollipop, then what, what would be the point? What would be the point of, of, of paradise? What would be the point of hell? What would be the point of, of living in this world? We live in this world for a purpose and that purpose is to do the things necessary to attain to paradise. And one of the necessary things, <coughs> excuse me, is patiently and with dignity dealing with the trials and tribulations that Almighty God 
sends our way. And so this COVID-19 virus is one of the trials that God has sent our way. And to go back to a, a verse I did reference, and, and that verse do you is, uh, do you think you will enter paradise when there has not yet come to you the likes of that which afflicted people before you? And, and so we think, and some of us are deluded by our, our technology, we're deluded by our scientific advance into thinking that the fundamental realities of the human condition have somehow been alleviated by technology. They haven't. And this virus clearly shows that. This virus has brought many of our technologically advanced systems screeching to a halt. You know, we micromanage, you have micro and macro. We develop these um, macroeconomic models that the whole economy has been uh, modeled out. And we factor in the various cycles of, of boom and bust, but we can't factor in a pandemic. And so this pandemic comes and then the entire economy, which had been described pre uh, pandemic as the greatest economy in human history comes grinding to a halt. And it, it leads us to reflect. So the, this, this situation, this whole pandemic, COVID-19 COVID uh, a situation leads us to reflect because as our economic systems grind to a halt, suddenly the pollution is not belching into the skies because the demand for the pro, pro, uh, production of the factories has disappeared. The commuting back and forth to work during March and April when things were on lockdown here in the States disappears. And the birds come back. The waters begin to clear up. The murky water offshore becomes blue again. The fish return to the shore. And, and so it's a reminder for us to reflect on our destructiveness. So yes, the virus is destructive. Yes, the virus has a heavy toll. But how does that compare to the destructiveness that we have brought about? There's a verse in the Quran, another verse. Corruption has appeared on the land and in the sea uh, based on what the hands of humans have brought about. Thus do we give them a taste of what they have done in order that they return to the path of divine guidance. And so we, we experience a taste of what we've done. The virus itself, we've cut down the forest, we've built out into wilderness areas and robbed of their habitat, many wild animals, the bats and the the other uh, creatures began to live in close proximity with us where formerly they were deep in the forest. And now we, we get these transmutation of these viruses from animals to humans. It's our, it's a consequence brothers and sisters of what we have done. And we taste uh, a taste. So it's not wiping us out. There's a terrible toll of death. But to go back to the verse, do you think you, you will enter paradise when there has not come to you the likes of that which afflicted those who preceded you? Those who preceded us, our grandparents lived through the Spanish flu. You look at the, the severity and the mortality rate of that flu compared to now. It was, it was exponentially greater. So this is from the lutuf. This is from the gentleness of our Lord. We say, oh, how could you say that? I say that because so far in this country, and one death is too many. Don't get me wrong. Well, 160,000 have perished. In the Spanish flu, flu, millions perished. Globally, not even one mil million have pa perished. The F Spanish flu, some estimates say up to 50 million or greater perished. And so those who preceded us they were afflicted with the likes of what we were afflicted with, but much worse. Before the Spanish flu, there were the various manifestations of the plague in the aftermath of the great bubonic plague of the 14th century, uh, Miladi or AD. And, and so they had to deal with that. Our Muslim forebears, uh, the companions, 
Justin, the remnants of the plague of Justinian that killed a large percentage of the earth's population. It killed many uh, noble companions, such as Shuhrajil or uh, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah. They all perished in the Jordan River Valley from the remnants of the plague of Justinian. And so we are only being tested with the likes of that which of those who preceded us, what they were tested with, but what they experienced were far worse. And despite that, they were patient. Despite that, they maintained their dignity. They didn't fall apart. Despite that, they entertained a good opinion of God. And so in conclusion, let me say this, my beloved brothers and sisters, as we deal with this plague, and hopefully God will lift this plague from us, which it, 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 it behooves us to repent from our sins, to examine our actions. What have we been doing that might have uh, brought about the displeasure of our Lord? Let's be patient. Let's maintain our dignity. Let's entertain a good opinion of our Lord. Our Lord is merciful. Our Lord, what if our Lord sent to us something as virulent as COVID-19 and as deadly as Ebola, which is also a, a, a virus, which has a, a death rate of 60, 70 percent over, over, out of every to almost every two out of over two out of, approximately two out of three people who get Ebola, Ebola, they perish. But it's not as virulent. It doesn't spread as as rapidly and as easily as COVID-19. But what if it did? And it's, it's, it's not impossible that we might confront such a virus. So let us be patient. Let us entertain a good opinion of our Lord. Let us understand no matter how bad things are, the people who ex preceded us experienced far, far worse, and they still maintain their faith. So let us maintain our faith. Let us thank our Lord for the many blessings that we do enjoy. Never, never, brothers and sisters, never stop thanking Allah for the blessing, especially in this country. And let me say this. I know my time is up, but let me say this. If we get the virus, we have a choice where we're going to quarantine. The basement, the attic, the guest bedroom. Many people, there's one room, there are five or six people in that room. If they get the virus, five or six other people are going to get it. They cannot quarantine themselves. They cannot self-isolate. May Allah bless you. May Allah, Almighty God bless you. May you keep smiling despite the pain. Smiling despite the pain. Why? Because you're some kind of a masochistic person? No. Because despite the pain, the death, the loss, we have the blessings being showered down upon us openly and open and hidden ways. And that should keep a smile on our face despite everything. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Good evening, good night, whatever the case may be. Be like our sister Maryam. She's smiling despite the pain. She's smiling because she's a newlywed. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.